Awesome. Okay. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My name is Carla, and on behalf of the student world, I welcome you to this session, Study English in the U.S. Discover Georgetown University, ELC. Now, I'm going to explain to you super fast how the platform works so we can get to the good stuff. Um, on the right side of your screen, you will see the chat. I see that some of you have, have already found it. So hi from Philippines, Somalia, India. That's so amazing. Thank you so much, guys, um, for joining us. There, you can send us like these kind of messages where you're from and all that stuff. But if you have questions during the session, please go to the next window, which is a question staff. There, you can ask all your questions and doubts. I will keep track of that, and we will have a Q&A session at the end. We will also be having some polls that will be on the third window of your chat tab. Um, so whenever we, we ask you to, to answer a poll for us, you would just go there and click on the answer that, that you want, and that will be it. Also, if the notifications of the chat get a little bit like um, too into your head and distracting, you can mute them on the bell that is right on the, on the top of the chat. You will see a little bell icon and there you can mute the notifications. Awesome. Okay, so let's start with the session now. I'm going to introduce you to our presenters for today. We have Stephanie Gallup, Regan Carver and Christina Koenig. And they will share with us all the amazing opportunities that Georgetown University ELC has for you. So the stage is all yours, guys. Great. Uh, start with myself. Uh, my name is Regan Carver. I'm a program manager with, uh, with the Georgetown English Language Center, and I've focus primarily on student recruitment, and I'm really excited to meet everybody today. And So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Gallup. I'm the Associate Director for the Intensive English Program. And I'll be talking to you today about all of our course offerings, uh, what it's like to study at Georgetown, and can answer any questions you have about classes. Hey, hello, everyone. My name is Christina. I am our program director for the, pro uh, the English Language Center. And I'll be talking with you later on about how you can apply for our programs, as well as the immigration process. And again, thank you for joining us. Great. And today, during this presentation, uh, we're going to talk about the mission and history of the Georgetown University, as well as the English Language Center. We're going to talk about summer 2022 uh, 20, uh, course offerings, fall 2022 co course offerings, how you can apply to join other students from around the world, as well as vi visa information in order to come and study with us. Next slide, please. And right now, if everybody can type into the chat, where are you, where are you joining us from? Already seen a lot of answers so far from the Philippines, Somalia, Indonesia, Nepal, Pakistan, Myanmar. Do you see any others, Regan? Um, Bangladesh, Cambodia, India, Mongolia. Welcome, so everyone. Vietnam, definitely. Really great. Sri Lanka, I see. Yeah, really great to have a diverse group of folks joining us today. Thank you for uh, coming and joining us. Um, yeah, and of course, we're ready to answer any questions that you have today during the presentation. And the first poll that we have is, 
Have you visited or studied in the US? So if you can open the poll, you'll see questions that you can answer. And for this one, we have, yes, I have studied in the US. Yes, I've visited the US on vacation. Yes, I have visited and studied in the US. Or no, I have never visited or studied in the US. So please give us your answer so we know where everyone is. Okay. Looks like almost everyone has submitted their answer and uh, the majority of you, 95% have not visited or studied in the US. So we're so excited to give you a lot of wonderful information today and we hope you'll come to join us soon. Great. Okay, and then poll number two, how many years have you been using English? Again, if you go to the poll section, you can answer zero to five years, six to 10 years, and 10 plus years, if you submit your votes right now. All right, it looks like just over half of you have been using English for over 10 years. This is wonderful. But many of you also have just been using for zero to five years or more than six years. So we're also really excited. We have a program for every student, depending on how often you use English and what you need to use English for. So we're excited to tell you more. And uh, here at Georgetown University, we build on many, many years of history from the Jesuit Catholic um, history of the university. Uh, the Georgetown English Language Center promotes academic excellence in teaching and learning that is guided by a Jesuit commitment to diversity and tolerance and respect for the individual. And right now I'm going to talk about student life in Washington, D.C. It's a vibrant city um, with a lot of great activities during the summer. We encourage students to explore life in the city while they're here studying with us. We're steps away from many of D.C.'s historic landmarks, museums, and major government institutions. There's kayaking and canoeing on the Potomac River visits to the U.S. Capitol and mu free museums and government institutions, a vibrant restaurant and outdoor ca cafe scene, uh, frequent outdoor meeting, movies and music festivals. And Washington, D.C. is a center for diplomatic and policy activities as well of the entire world, as you might know. And another thing that you might not be aware of is that DC was ranked number one in the US for city parks. And you can access extensive bike and hiking trails around DC, Maryland, and Virginia just within, within minutes uh, from the downtown uh, campus of the English Language Center. And so I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Stephanie right now. Great. Thank you, Regan. So I know there are a lot of questions right now um, regarding classes and admissions and requirements and all of those things. So we've just shared a lot with you about Washington, D.C. and Georgetown. And now I'm going to talk to you about the student experience on campus, our programs, our classes, and then at the end of the presentation, we will answer all of your questions uh, that you are putting up in the chat. So right now at Georgetown University, we are in the middle of our spring 2022 term. And as you can see here, students are studying. They're having a lot of fun in class. Currently, Georgetown University is um, still using a masking requirement. But as of next week, March 21st, this requirement will be lifted. 
Georgetown University is committed to student safety. This is the number one priority. So we continue to have in-person classes at Georgetown University and all students must be vaccinated and boosted for COVID-19. These are requirements that the university has set based on the public health conditions in Washington, DC. And so we've had a great time with students. Everyone is safe ever since the start of our in-person classes in the fall. And we hope that you will join us in this environment as well. So before we start talking about our different classes, we have one last poll question for you. What are your goals for studying English? So we know that many of you may be joining us today because you're interested in pursuing a university degree. Some of you may be interested in improving for professional or job-related reasons. And some of you may be interested in improving for personal reasons. So let us know in the poll which one of these best describes you. So it looks like just over half of you are interested in improving for professional or job related reasons, a quarter for a university degree, and still many of you for personal reasons. So I'm about to describe many different programs that we have at Georgetown University, and we have a program for all of these reasons. So please, let's hear about them. So at the English Language Center, we have eight week sessions in three different intensive English programs. We have a track in language and culture. This is for students looking to improve for personal reasons. We have a track in academic English, if you're interested in pursuing a university degree. And we have a track in professional English, if you're looking to improve for professional or job related reasons. These three different tracks are part of our intensive English program that run on eight week sessions, five times a year. In all of our courses, they're very small and interactive. So you have a lot of opportunities to speak and interact with your classmates and your professors. In classes, we integrate all language skills. This means in one class, you will work on your reading and your writing. In another class, you'll work on your listening and speaking. And in all of your classes, you'll work on the vocabulary and the grammar that you need to be successful in those skills. We have students from all over the world and a variety of academic and professional backgrounds. So we work to have engaging topics in a variety of fields in all of our classes. Students can also expect to receive individual writing and speaking feedback on their assignments. During class, you can expect to not only listen to the professor, but also to work with your classmates to have frequent pair and small group discussion to practice your speaking skills. Finally, all students have the ability to visit faculty and staff for office hours. In office hours, you will get one-on-one -on -one feedback and attention from your teacher about your assignment and your progress and to answer any questions that you have during your course. Our class schedule in the Intensive English program um, begins at nine o'clock in the morning. In the morning, students typically take their reading and writing classes. Then in the middle of the day, we have a break for study. You can start working on your homework. You can attend some workshops, go to office hours, and of course have lunch. In the afternoon, we begin again at one o'clock p.m. for electives and communication skills classes. These are listening, speaking, grammar, and other interesting topics in the afternoon. Classes end around 3.30 and after class, there are more opportunities for activities and of course, independent study. We are an intensive program, so students expect to do homework every night after classes in our program. So now let me tell you a little bit about each of those three tracks or three programs I mentioned. So if you're interested in improving for personal reasons, we invite you to apply to our intensive language and culture track. 
This will help you improve your language skills while also gaining a deeper understanding of US culture and how to communicate in a variety of cultural settings. You will build your confidence in both speaking and short writing. You'll learn strategies for discussion and email or virtual communication. And you'll strengthen foundational English language skills for academic and professional settings if you choose to can study, study further. This course is ideal for CIFR levels A2 to B1, which is a high beginning to intermediate level. Next, if you are interested in pursuing a university degree, we have our intensive academic track. This will help you develop the academic skills you need to successfully transition into academic life at a US college or university. In this program, you will learn how to write an academic essay and research paper. You will give academic presentations and you will learn to take notes with academic reading and lecture listening material. Students in the academic track also take elective courses on grammar, leadership and other special topics. We also will have weekly workshops and lecture series with experts in other fields to help you practice those communication and listening skills. For the intensive academic English track, we require a CEFR B1 or higher, which is intermediate level or higher. Finally, in these eight week programs, we have the intensive professional English track. This will help you refine your English skills while also understanding US professional practices in business and public policy as well as the critical leadership and networking skills you need for success. Since we are in Washington, DC, this is a wonderful place for students to learn more about professional practices in the US and also to um, enjoy the environment in Washington, DC. You will build confidence in your professional writing and communication skills while you analyze case studies and organizational structures learning about organizations and institutions in Washington. You'll practice professional skills for interviewing, negotiation, debate, and networking. And topics will focus on leadership, public policy, business, and non-governmental organizations or NGOs. For the professional track, you are required to have a CIFR B2 or higher, which is high intermediate level or above. So now I know you have questions about admissions and the applications. So Christina is going to deliver a lot of information about this process now. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, so uh, again, my name is Christina. So I handle all of our admissions and your immigration process. So if you have any questions about those, uh, I will be your point of contact. Uh, so as previously mentioned, all of our dates, um, uh, currently you see our, pro our summer session dates, our upcoming session will start in May and we have an application deadline for every session, roughly about one month and a half, one and a month half, um, well, I can't talk this morning, one and a half months before the program start date. Uh, so the summer session start uh, deadline is uh, April 15th. And so the tuition for one session, if uh, in one of our intensive English programs, so whether it's the intensive language and culture, the intensive academic, or the intensive professional track, uh, the tuition is all the same. So the tuition is four thousand six hundred and sixty-eight U.S. dollars. And then, if you require F one visa support uh, to enter the U.S. and you need the, uh, to apply for a Form I twenty, you will need to show sufficient funding per eight week session uh, you wish to enroll. So this includes the tuition the estimated living and personal expenses, the health insurance and the books, and the total estimated expenses for one eight week session is just over $10,000. Uh, so just note, uh, living in the DC area is very expensive. Um, so your personal and living expenses may vary depending on your personal habit. If you plan on living with the family while you are here, you will still need to show the living and personal expenses. You just won't uh, necessarily spend as much money for housing. And then all students are required to enroll in the Georgetown Health Insurance Plan. All right, so how to apply. Uh, first, if you wish to apply to our program, you must submit your application online 
along with a copy of your transcripts um, in English showing proof of completion of secondary school or, or studies, uh, university studies beyond. Uh, and uh, there's a $75 application fee. Once you have been admitted to the program, uh, you should accept your enrollment and pay there. We have a $200 tuition deposit. Uh, this tu tuition deposit is applied to your tuition once you enroll. So we don't keep this fee unless you do not enroll. And then all newly admitted students are required to take an online placement test to confirm your English proficiency level prior to your Form I-20 being issued. And then if you require F-1 visa support, I will assist you in applying for this separately once you have been admitted to the program. Uh, and then later on in this presentation, we'll talk more in depth on the immigration process and how to apply for that Form I-20. So save this link here. Um, this is our Linktree app, which will lead you to all of our admission applications. And now I will pass it back to my colleague, Stephanie, to talk to you about our uh, short-term programs that we offer this summer. Hello, everyone. So before I told you about our eight week programs, which run all year, but some of you may only have a short time to study or you'd like to come during the summer. So let me tell you about two programs we are offering for a short period in this coming summer. Our first program is American Conversational English. This is a three week program in July. This program um, invites students to Washington, D.C. for dynamic in-person lessons combined with practical field trips to major D.C. landmarks and venues to practice speaking in real settings. Just like our eight-week program, these are very small class sizes with emphasis on conversational American English with vocabulary, grammar, and discussion strategies. You'll have a variety of interesting topics as you meet students from all over the world. And your teachers will also have expertise in linguistics and language instruction. So if you're interested in improving your speaking and learning a lot more about Washington DC and US culture, this is the program for you. The deadline to apply to this program is June 1st. We begin July 18th and three weeks later, we end on August 5th. The system is very similar to the Christina described before. This program as a shorter program tuition is $19.89. And then you will need um, to show a total support if you are F1 student of $4,689 to include the estimated living expenses, insurance, books, and fees. If you'd like to apply, go ahead and visit this link where you'll submit your online application. You'll accept your enrollment and take our online placement test, and then you'll be able to start applying to receive F-1 visa support. Our second summer program that we are offering is a specific program for students who have already received admissions to graduate school. If you are studying a graduate program, master's or PhD in the fall, you might be interested in our English Skills for Graduate Students course. This is a boot camp or very intensive course designed for students who are already admitted to a US graduate program. In this program, students will quickly learn how to read university texts, including journal articles, textbook chapters and case studies much like the reading that you would have in your graduate courses. You'll participate in classes, group discussions, and team meetings, and you'll deliver oral presentations. You'll also write short reports and summaries with appropriate source referencing style according to the guidelines of US universities. You'll listen to lectures and discussions while taking effective notes, and you'll learn how to critically analyze information from text and audio sources and make connections across texts to other sources and to your own culture. The deadline to apply for the English Skills for Graduate Students course is May 1st. It begins on June 29th and ends three weeks later on July 20th. The tuition for this course is $1,999. And if you are an F1 student, 
you will need the total support for your I-20 shown as $4,699. So for this program, you will need to apply for the program online. This will include sharing your admissions uh, to the program, uh, graduate program that you will be starting in the fall. This is a requirement for this program. Once you accept the enrollment, you can apply for your immigration documents and then you'll attend the course. So please visit this link at the bottom of the screen if you wish to apply to this program. Now, there are many questions regarding the immigration process, and Christina will take it from here to answer these questions for you. Thank you. Uh, so again, my name is Christina. So I'm going to talk to you about the immigration process for all of our English programs, whether you're not you're, whether you're interested in one of the intensive programs or one of the short-term programs. The application process is all the same. So once you have been admitted to a program, um, yep, you'll start your immigration process. So again, it's for all of our programs, the intensive English programs, the American conversational English program, which is that three week uh, conversational English course, and then the English skills for graduate students program. So once you have been admitted and you have accepted your enrollment, you will receive an email with step-by-step -step instructions on how to apply for the Form I-20. Uh, to apply for the Form I-20, you must submit uh, a sufficient financial documentation, so that's that total estimated cost, a copy of your passport information page, and then the EOC applicant information form. And once we have received all of your documents and reviewed them, the Form I-20 is typically issued within three to five business days after you've taken our mandatory online placement test. So again, this mandatory online placement test is to confirm your current English proficiency level but it, it is only required for the intensive program. So the intensive academic, intensive language and culture, and then the intensive professional program. Um, and the form I-20 is then requir is required to apply an interview for an F-1 visa at a U.S. embassy or consulate. And then once you travel to the U.S., <clears throat> you will need to show both your I-20 and your F-1 visa along with your passport when entering the U.S. And then if you have any specific questions uh, regarding your, your specific immigration application process, please email us. Um, and then you should apply, always apply to the program as early as possible. That way you can apply for your I-20 early and you can apply at the U.S. Embassy early because there are always visa processing delays. And then if you wish to check the current visa wait times in your country, so the COVID-19 pandemic, um, has caused many U.S. embassies and consulates to close or have long delays. So you can check this website here to see what the current um, processing wait time is in your, at your local U.S. embassy or consulate. And so we welcome all your questions. Uh, please type your questions uh, either in the question or in the question box and we will get through all of your questions. And lastly, um, you can write down, please write down our contact information. You can contact us by phone, WhatsApp, or email. And we hope you do follow us on social media to learn more about all of our programs and the exciting events that all our current students are participating in. And thank you for joining us this evening. Perfect, Christina. Thank you so, so much. I see some questions on the chat. So uh, let's go to them. I will go to the first one that is obviously the one that repeats the most so I can like we can get it out of the table right now. <laughs> About scholarships. Do you offer any kind of scholarships or financial aid for these um, courses? Unfortunately, we do not at this time we do not offer any scholarships for the program. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, here, someone is asking, are these face-to-face -face classes or do you also offer online courses? So currently, all of the programs that we have shared with you today are in person at our campus downtown in Washington, D.C. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, here, 
Rachel is asking, do you need, do we need an IELTS um, test proof or something like that? So students are not required to share TOEFL or IELTS scores. You are welcome to do that as part of your application, but all students are required to take a placement test this is what helps us to determine your level before you begin studying. So like I mentioned before, we have the approximate CIFR level requirements, A2, B1, B2. We have all students take a test uh, that is designed for our program, and this will let us know if you um, are qualified to enter the different tracks of our program. But no TOEFL, no IELTS is required. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, about the visa process, like, do you know in average, you know, these changes like within every situation, but here it's um, a lot of uh, students are asking about the visa process. How long does it take? Like the documentation that they may need. Can we go through that again, please? Yep. Actually, we can, I can go back to the slide on it. So for the immigration process, uh, so if you start from the very beginning, so even at the application process, once you've submitted your application, your application is reviewed. We try to review it within one week, but sometimes it may take up to two weeks to review, depending how busy and how many applicant applications are, are submitted at one time. Uh, so if everything goes well and you've been admitted to our program, um, you'll start your immigration process. And the immigration process can take... Uh, for applying the I-20 can take, it honestly, it's up to the student how long it takes you to upload the documents. So if you upload all your documents in one day, your I-20 can be issued within three to five days. But that is also um, after you have taken the placement test. So the placement, the mandatory placement tests uh, are set days. So we have scheduled dates. Um, you can upload all your documents to the um, up, all, upload all your documents for the form I-20 and have everything ready, but I will not actually issue the I-20 until uh, you have taken your placement test. So it doesn't take long, too long for the, uh, on our end, the longer part is actually at the U.S. Embassy or Consulate, uh, and that really just varies by consulate. Some countries are still, it only takes a couple days just to get a visa, uh, get a visa appointment, some students are still having to wait months to get a visa appointment. So that's why it's very important um, to check this site. It's the travel.state.gov, uh, U.S. Department of State's website on estimated visa wait time. So on this site, you can actually put um, your the U.S. Embassy that you're going to apply for. So if you're going to apply for an um, F-1 visa in like Hanoi, Vietnam, then it'll show you the estimated visa wait times. So I hope that answers your question. Perfect. Thank you, Christina. Here um, I have some questions like, okay, usually how the visa is valid for how long? Do you have an answer for that? That varies again by the U.S. Embassy or Consulate. Uh, some, some embassies uh, will issue it by the length of your I-20. So if you say you're only gonna study for one session, so the, that's roughly two months, um, then your visa sometimes can be issued for two months, sometimes they issue it for four years. Unfortunately, I don't have a um, answer for that. Yeah, it depends. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a very specific situation. Um, here someone is asking also about the accommodation. Like, he, he, she says, like, what about the accommodation? Are we able to get to the campus dorm or do we need to look for the accommodation on our own? So on-campus housing is very limited, uh, specifically for the fall. Because of COVID, um, it has really messed everything up. But the fall and spring semesters, um, where our students are unable to get on-campus housing, summer semester uh, there is that possibility but we have to know ahead of time so if you are going to come for this summer uh, and you want to live on campus you have to let us know once you I would honestly tell us as soon as you start applying for your I-20 process 
um, that way we can communicate with on-campus housing to see if there's availability. There's, we cannot um, promise on-campus housing or any, for any session, uh, but we do have a lot of resources for housing options uh, in the local area. Um, many students, I would say actually majority of our students uh, actually live off campus and uh, private housing, and then they just commute to the campus. And some people also do homestays with local families as well. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, here, someone is asking, do you need any academic degree? No. So academic degrees like in undergraduate or graduate, uh, bachelor's, master's, PhD, these are not required for studying in our program. Uh, Christina, can you say a little bit about the age requirement? Yeah, so all students must graduate, uh, every student must actually graduate high school. Uh, we, you don't have to have a, a university degree, but high school is a requirement. Uh, and you also need to be at least 18 years of age. Now, let's say you're 17, but you're going to turn 18 and like the first week or during the, uh, the first session that you're enrolled. Um, then we make exceptions for that, but that is on a case by case. And that's just something we, um, you have to let inform us at the time of your application process. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, here, um, the, the students are asking about the duration of the program. So Stephanie, if you can go like very briefly through, through the programs again. Yes, I'll go back in the slides. Uh, Okay, so we told you today about um, eight-week programs and a couple of three-week programs. So um, these three programs, language and culture, academic English, and professional English, these are eight-week sessions five times a year. So some students will study with us for only eight weeks. If some students want to continue improving and move up in their level, they might study for 16 weeks, 24 weeks, 32 weeks, however long it takes for them to reach the level that they desire. Also, these classes take place starting in the morning at 9 o'clock a.m. and end, classes end in the afternoon at 3.30 p.m. You have a break in the middle of the day for lunch and we have activities in the middle of the day as well as after class. Classes are also Monday through Thursday. We do not have classes on Friday. These are our eight-week programs. And uh, the dates for those programs, these are the dates again uh, for our summer 2022, our fall 1, 2022, which is eight weeks, and our fall 2, which is the next eight weeks. So you can check out those dates here on the screen. You can also check our website after this presentation. Um, to see those details as well. Then for our summer, our short-term programs that are this summer, they're both three weeks long. So the conversational English is three weeks. Um, this is the same schedule, 9 o'clock to 3.30 in the afternoon, but it includes a lot more field trips and going out into the Washington, D.C. area. This program is from July 18th to August 5th. And then our other three-week program is the English Skills for Graduate Students program. This one also is a similar schedule, and it begins June 29th and ends on July 20th. So I hope that answers all of the questions about the duration of the programs. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, here... Someone is asking, like, we know that they have to be at least 18, but is there any age limit to apply? No. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, someone here is also asking if you have an average um, living cost for, for Washington, D.C. Yes. Yeah. So let me just pull up the estimated fees. Also, one really uh, important thing, John Nobel is asking, while studying, are we allowed to, to work? 
Um, if you so could I, speak to that, Christina. Yeah, I'll answer both of those. So the estimated living expenses um, that we have listed is set by the universe, the DC government and the university. Um, so for roughly eight, an eight week session, so around like two months, um, it's around $5,100. Uh, living in the DC area is very expensive. The closer you live in, to the campus or downtown DC or DC in general, um, is gonna be more expensive. Many students actually live just outside like in Northern Virginia or Maryland and they commute into the city. It's not a long commute. Uh, some, uh, some of the locations can be just a, like a 15 minute Metro ride. So it's very short. Um, and again, this will vary depending on if you live with roommates, if you live by yourself, if you go out to eat every night or if you cook at home, um, there's a lot of variances. So you'll just um, have to just budget yourself. And then as for the working, uh, working on an F um, in the U.S. as an F1 student, uh, so the F1 student is that F1 visa, uh, it actually restrict, it restricts you from working in the U.S. off campus. Now, if you come and you want to work on campus, you can. Um, you're eligible to work on campus for a total of 20 hours a week. No more. If you work more than 20 hours, it is a violation of the visa. Um, so working more than 20 hours on campus or working off campus is a violation of F1 visa, which will uh, result in your Form I-20 being terminated and you having to leave. So we don't want that for anyone. Uh, but don't, I would not try to come here expecting to work on campus jobs. Jobs are very limited uh, and they do have a priority to undergraduate students on work study programs. Perfect. Thank you, Christina, very much. Um, here. Okay, so I, I will put the slide again because here is as, someone is asking about the, the bank statement required. So uh, as, as I see here, like for example, for the eight week session, it will be like the 10,068, right? Yes. So if, uh, when applying for your I-20, you'll have to show sufficient funding and majority of students, I would say 99% of students, it's a bank statement, whether it's your own personal bank statement or if it's a family member, it cannot be a friend. Uh, so it has to be um, a family member, like your mother, your father, your aunt, your sister, somebody. Um, so you can show a bank statement that shows at least this amount. If it is show, um, if it, it's less, then you'll have to show either an additional bank statement, um, but you need to show at least the $10,068. Uh, and that's for a one eight week session. Let's say you want to come for a full year. You need to show uh, this amount times four. So just over, so I think it's like four, just over four, uh, 40,000 um, US dollars. And the bank statement has to be in English, uh, but the currency can either be in US dollar or in your uh, home country currency, as long as, but the currency has to be listed. I can convert the funds, I just, can't necessarily read every language. Perfect, thank you very much. Here, someone is very uh, um, preoccupied about deadlines because um, she says, or he said, I'm sorry. Uh, I am in college and about to finish my high, higher school certificate exam. Can I go after the exam? The exam will be held on August 22nd. What do I have to do? Can, um, yeah, thank you very much. I will put this here so everyone can take a screenshot so they can have it there. So it sounds like for this particular student, um, the exam will be August 22nd. Um, so you, I'm just trying to think. So, okay, so our deadline is July 15th. Let's say you have your, you don't graduate until like, August 1st, but you still want to come to the intensive English program for August 22nd for the fall one session, you can still apply, submit your most recent um, high school transcript. And normally if um, either on the transcript, it will say expected graduation date. 
you, as long as it says that, or a letter from your, like, your high school counselor stating when you will graduate. So what will happen is you can still begin the process for everything, but you will, before you enroll in the program, you have to submit your high school, your um, either high school diploma or proof of uh, graduation from high school. So you can still apply um, by the deadline, even if a test is later. That Perfect. That the question. Thank you very much. Um, here I have another question. So do you have any pathway um, English programs or like if they want to um, apply to Georgetown to a graduate or undergraduate? So we do not have a traditional pathways program. A pathways program is where you're studying English and academic classes at the same time. We have what we call the ELC to MPS program. And this is specific for MPS programs within the School of Continuing Studies at Georgetown. So not all of Georgetown, um, it does not include uh, Georgetown main campus like the undergraduate programs or uh, most graduate or PhD programs. It's specific to the School of Continuing Studies. Uh, so what this is, is students who can apply to the uh, MPS program, so our Master's in Professional Studies program, um, they still have to submit a TOEFL score. Uh, it does not have to be the full amount. I believe the range is at 80 IBT or higher, um, so an IBT TOEFL. Um, if admitted to your MPS program, you can be conditionally admitted to where you enroll full time within the English Language Center, and then you once you complete our program through the highest level, and you you have the recommendations of your instructors, you can continue the following semester to your into your MPS program, and your English proficiency requirement is waived. Perfect. Thank you very much. I um, see here that Stephanie already answered in the chat, but in case everyone, uh, anyone else wants to know, like about the accommodation, would you guys help us to find or give us the list of the accommodation near the campus? So we have a comprehensive housing guide on our website. And after students apply and are admitted to the program, we also share uh, these resources with you as well to help you with your search uh, for housing in Washington, DC. However, we do not have a relationship with private housing providers. We don't tell you exactly where to live, but we do give you some suggestions and resources um, so that can help you with your search. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so here someone is asking about the fees. So um, if someone in, in their family, maybe not their parents or something like that, will they be able to show the fees of someone else around their family or does it have to be their own? So the fee, the bank statement has to be either the student, so if either be your bank statement or a family member it cannot be a friend so it, it can be your mother or your father brother sister aunt uncle grandparents it cannot be your best friend from college it cannot so it has to be someone who is uh, related to you okay perfect thank you very much now after the programs um do they get a certificate? Do they apply for another exam? How does that work? So after students complete our programs, you do receive a certificate of completion. We do not have degree programs in our department. So there are no bachelor's degrees or master's degrees, but we do have certificates of completion at the conclusion of our programs. Thank you, Stephanie. Here, someone is asking, is it possible to pay the fees in installments? Sometimes. <laughs> so because we work on eight week sessions, uh, we have to also go by the university payment schedule, uh, which the university runs on six week sessions. So two eight week sessions. So payment plans or installment plans are available for students who start at the beginning of a 
academic semester. So the fall one, the spring one, and I believe this summer there's an installment plan availability as well. Um, so that's August, January, or May start dates. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, here, someone is asking, can I take my daughter along with me? She is dependent on me. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah, so part of the I-20 process, uh, we on our one of our forms, we ask students, do you have any dependents that will join you while you are studying in the U.S.? Um, all you have to do is say yes, provide additional information about them, like their passport. Uh, and then we have a dependent information form. And then you will need to show additional funding. So yes, dependents can come with you as long as your dependents include your spouse or any children under the age of 18. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, here uh, we have another question. It is, is this amount an estimate or like the final um, net calculation? So this amount is estimated. Uh, the tuition is the final, that is the, the fee. I will say tuition um, for every program, at every university always goes up in July. So in July, tuition fees will be bumped up just a little bit. I think it's only maybe $100 more, not much more. Uh, the, um, and the rest of the fees are estimated. So the health insurance can vary. Um, and then the, the living and personal expenses will vary. And in textbooks, and Stephanie, we should be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe some courses, um, you may not have to buy Texas for. It's just some levels. Stephanie can verify that. Yes, so every student has multiple classes and the textbooks are not the same for every class. Um, so you will likely need to buy a textbook for at least one, um, one of your classes while you are here. Um, but because textbook costs are different depending on the level and the topic and the skill, this number is an estimate, but it may be, um, it may be less than this, it will not be more than this. Thank you, girls. Um, here, someone else is asking if you have or are planning like to have in the future any online classes. So at this point, no, we don't have anything set in stone that we will have any online classes, but we are looking to offer, during the pandemic, we did offer our classes online and we are possibly in the future looking to offer this American Conversational English program online, but it will not be, if we do, it will not be offered until maybe summer 2023. Perfect. Thank you very much. Here, somebody in the chat is asking if we can um, show your contact information again. So, perfect. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, put this whole screen so you guys can take a uh, screenshot. So, we have a WhatsApp number, an email, the, the website, uh, everything. So yes, please take a screenshot of that so you can save it. And also, just so you know, we are recording this session and we will upload it later to our YouTube channel, the Student World's um, YouTube channel. So you can go there and watch the session again in case you missed something or you want to watch like the, the slides presentation or anything like that. So I, I believe that we are reaching now the end of the session. Thank you, Regan, also um, that you're sharing the, the contact information on the chat. Thank you very, very much. So I don't know, guys, if you have any final words for the students that you would like to share. The only thing I have is I just cannot stress enough the applying early. So by applying early, um, you really want to avoid those visa processing delays. I've seen many students having deferred their admissions because their the visa processing is taking so long. So please apply as soon as possible. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We're happy to answer all your questions. And thank you again for joining us this morning or evening. <laughs> Thank you. So nice to meet everyone. Yeah, same.
Perfect. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us um, today, for sharing with us a little bit of your afternoons. I hope this session was a very beneficial for all of you, and I hope um, to see you in Washington, D.C. very soon. And thank you to our amazing presenters for sharing all this information with us. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.